Right now, the top spot for the internet's most hated woman is held by multi-hyphenate talent Olivia Wilde. So how did she earn the title? Well, turns out, if you want millions of women and girls everywhere to cyberbully you, date and then split from a younger pop star with the most zealous fans. I guess she's not missing Harry Styles. They do say the best way to get over someone is to get under someone else. Olivia's last two years have been messy. She was caught sweet-talking accused abuser Shia LaBeouf and demeaning her female star Florence Pugh all while touting her film Don't Worry Darling's grand feminist aspirations. To make matters worse, the film wasn't very good. Oh, and don't forget the B-plot of her long-term relationship with Jason Sudeikis crumbling in a highly public manner while Olivia had moved on with Harry Styles. Is this a script? Oh, okay. Got it. Thank you. The envelope, marked personal and confidential, actually contained legal documents from her ex. These overlapping storylines became the internet's favorite reality show, and Olivia Wilde was deemed the villain. Making matters worse, Wilde's personality is also a dream come true for online trolls, stands, and hot take factories, because with her penchant for semi-provocative behavior and edgy comments that don't always land, anyone can find something about her to hate. He can say he quit and yes. you fired him and yes. both of you can think you're yeah, right? It's a question of semantics. Depending on who you ask, they might say she's a cool girl, a rich kid, a nepo baby, a tryhard, or a pick me. They call her an adulteress, cougar, or bad mom, a feminist, a white feminist, or a fake feminist, even a predator. In somewhat of a perfect storm, the young girls who love Harry Styles and the right wing trolls who hate progressive women joined forces to take her down. So, how did Olivia Wilde become the internet's most hated woman, and are there any darker agendas at play? Now, of course, like all good feminists, Olivia sometimes gets attacked by men. And she usually likes to get attacked by men when she's trying to further her career. After Rihanna's Super Bowl halftime performance, Olivia Wilde was accused of thirsting for Rihanna's man because she shared an Instagram story of ASAP Rocky filming the show, captioning it, If I thought he was hot before, this really put me over the edge. The next day, Wilde clarified, For anyone who got it twisted, it's hot to respect your partner. But the damage was already done. Tweets and TikToks called her shameless, embarrassing, inappropriate, messy, cringy, crazy. Wild. Wild move. To post that. Wasn't this reaction maybe a bit out of proportion? Of course it was, but at this point, the internet's hatred for Olivia was fully formed. Anything she does will get dragged online. Wilde wasn't always the internet's favorite punching bag, though. Before she was the internet's most hated woman, Olivia began as the hot, cool actress and briefly reigned as a feminist hero director. Let's rewind. Wilde was born into an upper-class family of famous journalists and writers. Her mom even ran for Congress. At 19, she married the son of an actual prince. She began acting in the early 2000s and quickly became one of Hollywood's go-to hot girls of the next decade, akin to Megan Fox or Minka Kelly. In 2017, Maxim wrote, We've all had a crush on her for the last decade, and she topped their Hot 100 list in 2009. She played hot bisexual bartender, hot doctor, hot princess, and hot assistant slash temptress. Then she went on to challenge this typecasting off-screen. In 2014, she was described as your new favorite celebrity feminist, using the label when many celebs still skirted it. She spoke out about equal pay, representation, and double standards in Hollywood before it was normalized. It's really hard to get stories made that are about women, not just women being obsessed with men or supporting men. She got political, supporting Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2015 and the women's marches in 2017 and 2018. Then in 2019, after acting in nearly 40 films, Wilde made her directorial debut with the commercially modest but critically acclaimed film Booksmart. She was hailed as a feminist hero and the future of female directors. New era in Hollywood, the era of the sisterhood. We've got to show young women every possibility. Her relationship with SNL alum Jason Sudeikis raised her social capital even further. Getting together in 2011, they quickly became one of Hollywood's hashtag couple goals. The funny guy and the beautiful but crucially also funny girl. With her decade-long romance, two adorable children, and celebrated films, she seemed to be on top of the world. But then she became the focus of two groups of people you don't want to be on the wrong side of. Harry Styles stands and far-right internet trolls. Together, these legions manufactured a takedown that spread like wildfire. The people have spoken. The internet may hate Olivia Wilde, but they love Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Power up for springtime with these nutritious, chef-prepared meals delivered right to your door. 
Factor saves you time chopping, cooking, and meal prepping with pre-proportioned meals. With 34 dietitian approved weekly meals to pick from, there's always something new to try. These delicious, flavorful meals work with your diet, too, with keto, protein plus, vegan, and veggie options. Plus, their calorie smart meals only cost around 550 calories or less. Save the trip to the grocery store with Factor's fresh, never frozen meals. They're ready in two minutes or less, so all you have to do is heat and eat. Factor will help you cut back on takeout, too, allowing you to save on time and money. Because your Factor meals are carefully prepared, they're packed with ingredients you want and leave out the things you don't. Get Factor and enjoy clean eating with less hassle. Pick your meals, score your delivery, heat, and enjoy. Head to factormeals.com slash the take 50 and use code the take 50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code the take 50 at factormeals.com slash the take 50 to get 50% off your first box. In late 2020, Olivia cast Harry Styles in Don't Worry Darling. Harry stands were ecstatic until rumors of a relationship started swirling in January. Cue fandom meltdown. Normally, a woman can expect a fair amount of hate when dating a pop star, but the level of vitriol in Olivia's case was fueled by the fact that she was 10 years older, was his director, and was a recently single mother of two young children. Like. She actually, like, was obsessed with him and made it, like, her mission to be with him. She also didn't split from just anyone. She split from Ted freaking Lasso. Sudeikis' image was intertwined so closely with the warm, positive character that people without question took his side in the split. Here, the misogyny really stands out. The internet solely blamed her for their separation, labeling her a cheater, cougar, and a fame whore without truly knowing the details. Every Harry account seemed determined to dredge up all of Olivia's skeletons to poke holes in their relationship or force them to break up. Do you think it feels like to just be Olivia Wilde right now, walking around the streets of New York City? Just knowing that most of the people you're walking by would chop off their arms and legs to date your boyfriend. One user accused her of using using blackface for excessive tanning in a photo shoot. The same thread went after her for wearing a James Brown t-shirt. She was called a pedophile and abuser for an off-color joke about children ice skating, and was accused of grooming Styles. In their narrative, Styles was the naive victim who had fallen prey to Wilde by means of the uneven director-star power dynamic. The Tumblr tag faux Olivia and the Twitter hashtag Time's Up Olivia went viral. Blogs posted photos of her posing with Brett Ratner and Kevin Spacey to prove that she attracts offenders. Some ludicrously suggested that she served as an accomplice to Weinstein in luring victims. Slut shaming was also rampant, with fans leaking nudes and sharing deep fake sexual videos. The fandom's cause was heavily intensified and spread amidst the Don't Worry Darling drama. After rumors swirled of a falling out with Florence Pugh, the media couldn't get enough of this supposed woman-on-woman -woman feud. Page Six reported that Pugh wasn't happy with the unprofessional relationship between Harry and Olivia, and that it affected her directing. The same same article suggested that Harry and Olivia's relationship was an affair. Later, Pew criticized being reduced to sex scenes, while Wilde had loudly celebrated the depiction of sex as one of the feminist angles of the film. In August 2022, Wilde doubled down on her claim that she fired Shia LaBeouf from the leading role because of her no-assholes policy, positioning herself as a woman looking out for other women, namely Pew. But then, two days later, Shia said he quit, and Olivia recorded herself begging him to reconsider. I feel like I'm not ready to give up on this yet. In the leaked video, Wilde seemed to shift the blame and stated that it was time for a wake-up call for Miss Flo. The Don't Worry Darling drama was basically the internet's dream come true. Guys, we have the video. TikTok's For You page became a Don't Worry Darling reality show with episodes, storylines, and characters. I miss this right I miss the chaos that was this night. At the same time, the media took advantage of the anti-Olivia train through their coverage of her split. In October, the Daily Mail published exhaustive tea about Olivia and Jason's breakup, courtesy of the former nanny. She was just crying really hard and saying she left us. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do everything to win her back. How did Jason know that she was having an affair with Harry? He was reading all of her messages. The main takeaway? Not that Harry was a homewrecker, but that Olivia was the devil. Because of these multiple simultaneous narratives where Olivia was cast as the villain against Sudeikis, Pew, and Styles, the internet then looked for bias-affirming material of Wilde online, and there was plenty. Wilde was called classless and ungrateful for saying she's made about 5,000 shitty movies, but that they helped her define herself as a director. She was shamed for speaking about the fun her grandparents had in the 1950s, with trolls pointing out how horrible the decade was for so many. She was shamed for comparing making the move from acting to directing to coming out of the 
closet. Tweet after tweet called her insensitive, disgusting, homophobic, and after she said that Booksmart was the first job she had not connected to her looks, many dragged her for complaining about her career and pretty privilege. Some even began comparing her to another hated woman on the internet. Before the Anne Hathasons, there was the infamous era of Hatha hate. It came true. <laughs> Since Hathaway, other female celebrities have faced the cold shoulder of the web and contended for the internet's most hated woman title, including Gwyneth Paltrow, Millie Bobby Brown, Greta Thunberg, and Amber Heard. Like a number of these women, Olivia Wilde was politically active, outspoken, and attractive. The nail in the coffin was when Wilde called Jordan Peterson an enormous figure in conservative circles, this pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community. This was the far right's chance to take down Wilde, an outspoken liberal feminist and female director. With the Harry stands, Ted Lasso fans, and TikTok fanatics behind them, they could push it even further. How about you do your research, Olivia Wilde? I know, I know it's tough. Media Matters found that in just one three-week period in September, there were over 300 posts on right-leaning Facebook pages about Wilde, with over 200,000 interactions. Right-wing hubs like The Daily Wire, Breitbart, Gab, Rumble, and Telegram joined in. Headlines referred to who as a woke tard, disgraced, the queen of crazy. Media Matters saw terms like Tommy Whore, Hollywood Harlot, and Bimbo used to describe Wilde. So, while Wilde may have genuinely been pretty unlikable in this period to your average consumer, it's clear that outlets like these explicitly exploited the situation to get traction on social media. Meanwhile, it's all too obvious that Olivia would never face this level of hate if she were a man. When male filmmakers fall in love with their stars, it's seen as romantic or just a cliché, as if men can't really help themselves. Here are just some revered directors who fell for their actresses while filming. Martin Scorsese, Stanley Kubrick, Elia Kazan, Roberto Rossellini, Joel Cohen, Billy Wilder, John Carpenter, Charlie Chaplin, Paul Thomas Anderson, David Lynch, Ben Stiller, Ridley Scott, Peter Bogdanovich, Danny Boyle, Tim Burton. Both Steven Spielberg and James Cameron had on-set romances with women who were not their wives at the time. If anything, in many of these situations, it's the younger woman who's historically judged for breaking up a home. Yet when Olivia fell for Harry, it was seen as predatory and deeply threatened her credibility as a director. Already, we've got a lot of power things in play. You've got one actor who is directing scenes of intimacy involving an actor that they're in a personal relationship with. Then there's the age difference that Olivia was dragged for, but which is only under scrutiny when it's the woman who's older. Demi Moore was labeled a cougar, Aaron Taylor Johnson's wife is referred to online as granny and a groomer, Priyanka Jonas was called a global scam artist, but the couples we do accept? George and Amal, who have a 17-year age difference, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, 25 years, Dennis Quaid is nearly 40 years older than his wife, Leo doesn't date anyone born in the last century, and oh yeah, Jerry Seinfeld dated a high schooler during the height of his fame, it also goes without saying that a male director wouldn't be accused of abandoning their children for their work or a new relationship. The point here isn't that Wilde isn't easy to dislike right now, but that there's also a huge cultural and commercial incentive to find attractive liberal female targets to collectively hate online. It's universal. Men hate women, women hate themselves. Meghan Markle was famously bombarded with death threats, hate, and racist headlines by widely circulated publications, and right now, the most gripping pop culture story of the moment is a narrative of petty mean girl behavior pitting Selena Gomez against Kylie Jenner and Hailey Bieber and tearing apart all three women in the process. Olivia Wilde personifies the rise and fall narrative that so many people love to latch onto for beautiful famous women. Even today, Olivia and Harry have broken up, but the negative headlines and takes haven't stopped. She's now being written about as Styles' scorned ex, how she resents him and is desperate to reconcile. I probably would be hurt too if I dated someone for two years, had their entire fan base attack me, including me for two years and then they never like publicly like claimed me. Olivia can lay low and try to atone all she wants, but what we know for sure is the internet won't move on until they've found the next woman to hate. That's The Take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.